Welcome to On My Way to Wealth, the podcast where busy Gen Xers can learn financial tips as they navigate life on their way to wealth. And now, please join your host, Luis Rosa. Hello, and welcome to another episode of On My Way to Wealth. My name is Luis, and I'm your host. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you're happy, healthy, and safe. Today, I want to talk to you about college planning. One of the things I deal with a lot with my clients is figuring out how to save for their kids' colleges. You know, hopefully you get a great head start. You listen to this as your child is super young, so that you have plenty of time to save for it. Now, imagine giving your kids the gift of graduating with zero student loan debt when they graduate college. And, you know, a lot of us graduated with a ton of student loan debt, some of us as large as a mortgage, right? So imagine the head start you would have had if you graduated college with zero in student loan debt. You know, that would be an amazing head start. You know, you might have heard me in the past talking about how, you know, you don't necessarily need to leave your kids millions of dollars, right? You may not even want to do that if you could, but at least graduate in college with no debt. I mean, that is quite the head start if you think about it, right? So one of the great ways of going about this is using a college plan that is designed to save you money uh, from a tax perspective, depending on how you use that money. Now, the college plan was originally only for college, but recent law has changed it to allow for other things, which I get into in a little bit. So it's called a 529 plan. You know, a lot of you might have heard it referred to as a 529. So what is a 529 plan? Well, basically it's an investment account that you can set up to pay for education for your kids. And it can go beyond kids because uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be um, for a child. So plenty of people can set one up like grandparents for grandkids and so on. So I'll tell you a little bit about that in a second. But in a nutshell, it's it's an investment account that you can set up specifically de- designated to save for education. Before it used to be only for college. So you normally you still hear people say in 529 college savings plan. Um, but now, uh, due to recent changes, you can use it for other things like K through 12 apprenticeships and things like that. So we got that down. Now, where did the name come from? Why 529? You know, like, like many things, it's just section 529 of the internal revenue code. That's, that's all it is. So they call it a 529 plan. Same thing with your 401k, by the way, it's just section 401 of the internal revenue code. So just a little fun fact there. So let me tell you why these investment vehicles are so beneficial to you. Uh, Number one, there are two different uh, tax benefits that come along with it. One of them is the federal tax deferral. You know, so typically if you had an account that you open, say a brokerage account that you invested money in, throughout the year, you're going to get some dividends and, and things of that sort, capital gains, et cetera. And you end up paying taxes on that money as your money grows, you know, and even if you don't take the money out, right? But with a college plan, with a 529 plan, you can invest the money. Uh, so let's say you have a, a child that was just born recently or it's young, you know, hopefully you plan ahead, you sit down with your financial planner. Uh, if you decide that a 529 is the best option for you, you start this 529 plan, you start putting money in it, you invest it. All right, so these funds grow over time, you know, and they go up and down, obviously, depending on what you invested in. But ultimately, the goal is to invest this money so that it grows in addition to the money that you put in it, right? So that growth is tax deferred, and then it ends up being tax free if you take it out for qualified expenses, you know, and qualified expenses are things like you know, tuition, room and board. Um, books, you know, things of that sort, like school expenses, right? So if you do this properly, you can put money in a vehicle where you don't pay taxes on any of the gain because you use it later to pay for school. And number two, depending on your state, there are some states that also give you a tax benefit. For example, I'm originally from New York and in New York, their 529 plan allows married couples to contribute or deduct up to $10,000 per year off of their New York state income tax return that they contribute to this 529. So people that live in New York, say a married couple in New York can contribute to this 529. Let's say they open up a New York 529, get the federal tax benefits because they're not gonna pay taxes on the withdrawals later when they use it for school purposes. 
And then also every year get to deduct the contributions that they're making from their New York state taxable income, right? So this is a huge tax benefit, you know? So you want to check with your state because a lot of these um, plans are offered and sometimes you might end up with a, a 529 plan that isn't sponsored by your state. So I usually recommend, you know, obviously speak to your financial planner and your tax advisor, but normally the best place to start is to see if your own state already has a plan that they offer. Because if they do, it might be a really good idea for you to take a look at that because then you'll have both the federal benefits and the state tax benefits, right? So this is a, a really powerful thing because you want to take advantage of the IRS code. It's there for you to use it, right, to your advantage. So if, if there's a vehicle out there that helps you save for college and also use the funds tax-free, hey, why not, right? Sounds like a, a pretty powerful thing to me. Now, when you set up a 529 plan, there could only be one owner, typically. So even if you're a married couple, you have to decide who's going to own the account. So the owner is not going to be the person that is necessarily using the funds to go to school. It's just who's going to own the actual funds, right? So typically... Uh, couples would designate one person to own the particular account. So what I recommend that the the couple do is that they designate the other spouse to be what they call a successor account owner so that if something were to happen to the first party, then the successor kinks in. You know, so it's always smart to designate a successor account owner. So that's the owner. Then the second component of the account is you have to designate a beneficiary. And the beneficiary is going to be the future student. Typically, that's going to be your kids. However, it doesn't necessarily need to be. You can set up a 529 for your child. You can set up a 529 for a grandchild. So grandparents usually do that as well. They want to just like help their grandkids go to school. I've seen you know a lot of my um, elderly clients who are grandparents set up 529 plans for their own grandkids, right? Um you can set it up for a friend. You can even set it up for yourself, which is great. You could actually open up a 529, make yourself beneficiary, put money in it, and then you use the money to pay for school. <laughs> now, normally people don't necessarily do that. But what I've seen is if, for example, when the time comes to go to college and your child ends up getting a scholarship or, or not needing as much as you put away for because of scholarships or they went to a cheaper school or something like that, you can turn around and say, okay, now, now what? Now what happens? You know, they don't need this money because they got a scholarship or they didn't go to college, et cetera. What do you do, right? So here's the downside. If you don't use the money for school expenses, then you would have to pay taxes on the money that you take out um, plus a 10% penalty on it, uh, but not on the money that you take out, only on the earnings portion. Of that, you know, so because the money that you put in yourself was already after tax dollars, you know, you've already paid taxes on the money that you use. But if you think, take a withdrawal and it's not a qualified withdrawal, then you will have that 10% penalty on, on the, uh, you know, taxes on the earnings. Um, so that's something to consider, right? Now, it's not the end all and be all. I think you can be very flexible with this. So if you have, say, multiple children and one of them gets a scholarship and then you don't need the money for them, you can just change the beneficiary on the account and use it for the next child. You can wait it out and use it for grandkids later. Uh, if you are at a stage where you yourself want to just go back to school, then you can change the beneficiary to yourself and go back to school. You know, So there, there's plenty of ways to do that. Now, if you, for some reason, just end up needing to touch this for other than school expenses, then yes, you're going to end up paying a 10% penalty on the earnings plus taxes, federal and state income tax, right? Now, typically, these things were only used for college, but recent law changes has allowed a much broader way for you to use this money, uh, which is great. You know, one of the things that you can use it for is to pay for K through 12 education you know, which is great. So a lot of parents, even if they don't think that their child's going to go to college or they're not concerned with that yet, because, uh, you know, they, they're, they, you know, they're focused right now on saying paying K through 12 tuition. You can do that. You can still set up a 529 plan and use that to pay for elementary, secondary, public, private, religious school, K through 12, you know, uh, you can use it for apprenticeship programs, you know, so it's pretty flexible. Another great thing that you can use it for is to pay for uh, student loans, any federally qualified student loan, you can pay for 
up to $10,000 is a lifetime limit right now um, to pay for student loans, which is actually pretty cool, right? Uh, so that's another great benefit of it. Now, one thing to be in the lookout for, and again, uh, talk to your tax advisor and financial planner about this. A lot of states don't follow the federal when it comes to the whole K through 12 thing. You know, a lot of states still have it in their law that a qualified distribution is only for higher education. So you might find yourself in a situation if you're using it for K through 12, where you are uh, getting the tax benefits on the federal side, but then on the state side, you have to recapture uh, some of the um, state tax free withdrawals on the earnings. You know, so you want to talk to your tax person about that because that's definitely a planning issue right there. But nevertheless, uh, for the most part, if you're planning to for using this for long term. Uh, I think it's a great idea because then, you know, especially the younger you start, the better. Now, what are some of the investment options that you have in there? Um, this is great because it's one of those things where you you could, in a way, kind of like set it and forget it. You know, the, a lot of 529 plans allow you to deposit money via online, right? You open up an account online, you can link it to your bank account, make deposits whenever you want. Most of them don't even have a minimum, or if they do, a super low minimum to start it. You don't have to necessarily add to it every month. Um, it's probably best if you do a, a smaller chunks as you go, because then the money gets to compound over time. Uh, and it's also, you know, a lot easier to put $100 a month away than, than it is to put $1,200 away a year later, right? If you wait until you get a tax refund or something. So if you can get into a habit of just putting money into it in smaller chunks, usually per paycheck or per month, that'd be ideal. Now, in terms of investing, uh, how do you decide to invest? You know, most plans have what's called an age-based portfolio option, which is a pretty cool way of going about it because you don't have to worry about the management of the funds. So the portfolio, what it does is it invests more aggressively in their earlier years of the child. And then they start getting more and more conservative as you get closer and closer to the college age. So it, if many of you have had a target date fund, like in your 401ks, where you get like, oh, retirement 2050 fund, you know, it's a similar concept to some degree where, you know, if your child is two, they're going to have more stocks in their portfolio because they could afford, you know, they have 16 years to go through the ups and downs of the market, right? If your child is 16, then you're probably going to be in a mostly bond portfolio so that where you, you kind of just you know, not subject to so much volatility because you're going to be needing the money to pay for school very soon, right? So it's very easy. Like you don't have to be super knowledgeable about investing. You just set it up and say, put it in one of these conservative, let's say if if, uh, if the child's already old, then you just choose a college age portfolio that's conservative, right? Um, if they're young, you use college age based, they'll put it in the appropriate portfolio based on that, right? So pretty easy in terms of managing it. Uh, a lot of plans offer a cool thing too, where they give you either payment coupons or they give you some sort of like electronic link where if you want, you can share that with family and friends so that when it's like the child's birthday or graduations or things like that, and they get gifts, people can actually contribute to their 529 plan. Now your child may not be too happy because they're used to getting cash and gifts. <laughs> so if you go to them and say, hey, guess what? You, you now have X amount in your 529. They're going to look at it. What? No, I, I want the, the video game. <laughs> but it's another cool way to just, um, you know, continue to save for your kid's college. And, you know, one of the things that I look at when I'm doing planning with my clients is the cost of college is outrageous. And it usually goes up faster than the rate of inflation on other things, you know? So college costs could really creep up on you. So if you have young children now and you have not set up a 529 plan, I highly encourage that you consider that because you're better off getting ahead of it now, taking advantage of the tax code, you know, especially if you're in a state that also offers um, a 529 plan that is sponsored by your state, because then you get tax benefits on both federal and state side. And then eventually you're going to have the options. If your kid ends up getting a scholarship, congratulations, great. You know, then then at that point you do some planning around it. You know, maybe you you go back to school yourself or if you have another child, use it for them, use it for grandkids, et cetera. So it's pretty flexible. In the worst case scenario, you pay a 10% penalty plus taxes on the earnings if you end up not using it for education expenses. Um, 
but they're a great tool. So I highly encourage that you look at your 529 plan, start by looking at whether or not your state sponsors one, then have a conversation with your financial advisor and tax professional to make sure that this is the right thing for you. And then just start putting money towards it. You know, as um, if you sit down with your financial planner, it's a great idea because then you can do some sort of projection based on projected costs for state colleges or private schools, et cetera. Um, and that way you know how much you need to put down today, right? How do you eat an elephant? They say one bite at a time, right? So figure out what the elephant is going to cost and then start putting the little bites away now, right? So that you have enough money when the child goes to college. And if you can say to somebody, hey, congratulations, you graduated college and you're debt free. It's an amazing thing to be able to do that, right? Just to give your kid that solid head start. Congratulations, you are debt free. And now you can go out into the world making money and just start building your own nest egg. And maybe they can do that for their kids as well. All right, so it's pretty powerful stuff. So thank you all for tuning in. I hope to see you on the next episode. As always, you know, if you want to set up a complimentary consultation, feel free to reach out. Just go to buildabetterfinancialfuture.com, click on the schedule a call button, and I'll be happy to meet up with you to answer any questions you may have. If you have any questions or any topics that you'd like to see in the future, or anybody that you'd like for me to interview, et cetera, send me an email, luis at onmywaytowealth.com. Thank you all for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to On My Way to Wealth. If you have any questions, please send me an email at luis at onmywaytowealth.com. The information provided here is for information and education purposes only. The opinions expressed herein are solely those of myself, unless otherwise specifically cited. Material presented is believed to be from reliable sources and no representations are made by my firm or myself about other parties' information or accuracy or completeness. All information or ideas provided should be discussed in detail with a financial advisor, accountant, or legal counsel prior to implementation. Thank you.